On Saturday, the government of Zamfara State announced the shutdown of some broadcast stations in the state. Two of the affected stations are owned by the federal government, while the other uh, three are privately owned. The State Information Commissioner Ibrahim Dosara said Governor Matawale ordered the immediate shutdown of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA Guso, Federal Radio Corporation, Pride FM Guso, Almuma TV, Gamji FM and Gamji TV. There is no indication that the Zamfara state government got permission from Nigeria's broadcast regulator, NBC, to sanction the media houses. What's well, joining us to discuss the seeming abuse of power is Deji Awobiide. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, Deji, for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. So, um, we, 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 we know that in, in reaction to what happened in Zamfara State, the Broadcasting um, Organization of Nigeria, Bonn, uh, had, had reacted, saying that the government of Zamfara State had no powers whatsoever uh, to shut down these media houses, whether they be owned by government or even private stations. Um, en enlighten us, as laymen, what the law says about you know, issues such as this. Uh, thank you very much, Mimi. Uh, one thing is clear that the constitution provides for uh, the freedom of the press. I mean, that you will find in Section 39 of the constitution, which clearly provides that you, know, um, you can disseminate information, you can disseminate uh, opinions without any fear of any, any rancor or any threat. So that's, that's clearly provided for in the Constitution. Now, and what's good is that the NBC and the BON, as well as the NUJ, quickly came out in defense of those stations to ensure that um, press freedom is not suppressed. So if you have a right that is guaranteed by the Constitution, it cannot be taken away either by any arbitrary means or either by any uh, uh, underhand tactics. Uh, of course, you can see that this one clearly has a political undertone, and that's why it played out the way it did. But interestingly, um, today I read in the papers um, that the government of Zambia has apologized for what seems to be uh, an error of judgment in terms of trying to impose its will on the um, media houses. You know, we uh, went through a lot to get to this point. I mean, we went through the military rule and we've tried to ensure that our flagging democracy is protected uh, from 1999 to date. So it's very important that the, N the NBC and the NUJ and the BON came out clearly in defense of these media, media stations because the right to sanction media houses or to impose any penalties on them is clearly vested in, in, in the NBC. So without the NBC imposing any of those sanctions or penalties, it is, it is wrong for any, for any person, uh, particularly in this case, the government is after our state, to try and impose its will on these media houses just because um, the media houses did not uh, do what it thought uh, was favorable to it. In other words, the background to all of this is that the media houses went ahead to cover um, the rally of the opposition party, the PDP, and gave some uh, media airtime air to uh, the governor's um, opposition uh, rival of the other party. So that's where all of this is coming from. And of course, I also found it very interesting that this um, um, defense of the government in terms of alleged security and unrest and a further suspension on all political activities came shortly before the, the PDP rally. I mean, it wasn't a month before, it wasn't known uh, to even the media stations well in advance that there was an executive order by the governor. Okay, so all of a sudden, you just went ahead and issued a fiat like you are uh, in the military era. I mean, we've moved past all of that. Uh, right now, we should be trying to salvage um, our nascent democracy, try to hold it together, try to promote it and sustain it and not to have um, such pronouncements or such unguarded utterances issued by um, the executive arm of government of Zafra State. I'm curious because many people have asked that question of um, 
does the government of any state have a, the powers as outside of the Electoral Act to say, well, we're banning all forms of political campaigning or pol politicking, especially at a time where INEC has said, well, we've taken off the ban on campaigning and so let the games begin. Does a state have any powers outside of the Electoral Act to put such a ban in place? Uh, absolutely not. No state has that kind of power. And that's why in the statement issued by the NBC and the BON, they did reference the fact that the actions of the government of Zafra State was unconstitutional. And of course, in acceptance of that particular uh, gap on their part, they issued an apology. Now, don't forget that INEC itself is a body that is recognized by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is all, which is, is supreme. It's so it's, it's the sovereign instrument of which all of us are bound by, um, whether state, local, federal, we are all bound by the constitution. And no matter how, how, how aggrieved you feel about the content of the words of the constitution, it's still the preeminent document uh, that, that guides our relationship as, as, as a people. So it's no governor, no either the president, the governor, or the chairman of any local government has the power so you know, by his own, his own, his own will, say, well, no more campaigning. Nobody can use this particular place. Nobody can, nobody can, uh, uh, no media house you can cover any candidate. All of those things are things of the past because INEC has um, opened the floodgates for campaigning, campaign season. So what what the government should be focused on is pushing out his agenda, his achievements. What have they done in the past four years to make the life of the average Afaran better? What do they plan to do in the next four years to further enhance the legacy which has put in place in the last four years? So it's, it's when, you are, when you are afraid that you don't have anything to campaign on that you then go ahead to try to impose and unmuzzle your position. I believe that at this level of our democracy, we should be talking about issue-based campaigns. We're talking about ideas, about what we can put on the table to better the lot of our, of, our, of our brothers and sisters in all parts of the country, and not just muzzle the people out of, uh, of the political space. The PDP is a political party, just like the APC, hmm. right? The APC is in power now. But who says that the PDP will be in power in the next election, after the results are counted? So we need to ensure that we are tolerant in how we practice our politics, either at the state level or the national level. We need to be very tolerant of, of, of all of the opposition. Politics of ideas without bitterness is what I what is what I look forward to as an average Nigerian to see this election season. But, but uh, the good news, like I say, is that the defense put forward by the NBC and by the BON and the NUJ is quite commendable. And of course, that have made the government to do a U-turn. Uh, and to apologize publicly to those media houses. And, you know, for good measure, those media houses can, I mean, go ahead and See. maybe take on legal action against the government if they so desire, mm. or uh, particularly the order directing all military personnel or all police personnel to enforce that directive of the governor. Mm. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a breach of the right to dignity of human person, of all those journalists who work in that station who might have been solicited to all kinds of uh, ill treatment on account of the governor's executive order. So it's important that these agencies, the NBC, the BON, protect our democracy, protect the freedom of the press. Don't forget that lives have been lost to get us to this particular point, to get us to a point where we now enjoy this freedom that we all have, mm. either on social media, either as a licensed broadcasting uh, TV or radio stations, we work out to get to this point. We should not allow the likes of uh, Governor Matawali to take us back to the, to the days of, uh, of uh, Egypt. We have moved beyond that, and we are looking at getting to our Canaan land. Okay. And I believe that with the actions of the NBC and the BON in curtailing the excesses of this uh, kind of government, we would be able to get to the promised land in no sooner time. Let me talk. Let's talk about the the dangers of government owning this many media houses. I've been uh, at forums where uh, conversation has been had as to um, media houses in this country and how many of them are state owned. 
Now we know how it works in Nigeria. Every state does have its own media. The federal government also has one domiciled there. So you have the federal and the state, all owned by government. What are the possible dangers of government owning these many um, media houses and what it could also do in terms of stifling the freedom of press or um, you know, freedom to cover as much as they would? Because many would say uh, that some of these state-owned media are just basically um, praise singers of the government in power. What must be done to change that narrative? Well, thank you very much for the question. Um, I recall that when, when I was growing up, um, the, and the government stations were the only uh, means of um, getting any official information from the government. So um, we all had to wait for the, the government stations to come on here and tell us and push whatever narrative that the government wants to push. But of course, with private stations coming coming on board, uh, we've all seen um, a movement from people not having the choice of what to watch to having very diverse um, TV channels, um, pushing for different, uh, different arguments, different content for all of us to now pick from. So, of course, I really do not see anything problem with government owning a TV station. Um, pushing out his own agenda is open propaganda. But, of, but what I enjoy right now is that the people have the right to pick and choose um, which TV station to watch, which is a good thing that the government itself has enabled the environment for these private TV stations to also try. So it's now left for the government's TV station, own TV stations or podcast stations to now up their game to a level where people would willingly choose to watch their programs. Um, for me, I don't remember the last time I ever watched the, uh, a government's own station. Uh, I mean, it's been years that I ever did that. Because I have a spot for choice. Okay, so um, each station has its own dynamic um, uh, content and programming. So you find that sometimes, uh, even right now, for the prime time slots, you have people switching channels and taking a bit of the content from each uh, different station. So it's good that you have such diversity um, and it helps the, the, the public to be better informed. Mm. So gone are the days where you can decide to impose yourself and just push out government propaganda. It no longer works anymore. People can even go ahead and pick out their own uh, news online. I mean, you have, you have various online platforms also disseminating information. So people are better advised now. You know, back in the day, um, I mean, this campaign season will have been all stuck with watching rallies of political parties and nothing else. But these days, all you just get is a recap of the highlights of these rallies, of these um, engagements. In five minutes on, on social media, you can watch a recap of all that has been said, and you can move on. So kudos must also go to the NBC and other um, regulators that have made this platform readily available for private individuals to own TV stations. I must also acknowledge the proprietors of these TV stations for the painstaking efforts that they've made to get us to this very to this point. What is pertinent for me as a legal practitioner is that the constitution um, is supreme, and no person should be allowed to disregard or, or engage in any action that would um, render our constitution to be at the back burner of national discourse. It's, no matter what we think about the Constitution, it still remains our supreme document that guides how we relate and how we do all that we do as a people within the territorial boundaries of Nigeria. So it's important that um, we are able as a people to pick and choose which medium we want to hear um, any information, which media outlet we want to follow, want to listen to. And the government needs to, needs to understand that it needs to up its game from what it had during the military era. You need to, you need to move with the times. Otherwise, this station will be left behind. But, but, but why, but, but why this, would government want to up its game if it's benefiting entirely from how this propaganda, in your words, or propaganda stations are working? Why would they want to up their game? Again, you and I have had conversations previously about government trying in the guise of, you know, trying to regulate media, to try to stifle the press. And we've seen people come out en masse to, you know, kick against that, thank goodness.
But then how do we also make sure that this doesn't, continue, this doesn't come again in the future in another guise to try to regulate the media or social media and then, of course, try to stifle those private media houses um, who are able to put out the truth unfiltered as opposed to the propaganda stations that you've made reference to in closing? Well, like I said, we are a, we are a growing democracy. We're still nascent. We're barely 15, barely, um, say, 23 years of this democracy. So you will still expect that those military tendencies that we used to have, it will take a while for those things to be flushed out of our system completely. But, however, the point must be made that these private TV stations, yes, they are able to put out the news unfiltered, but we also have civil society organizations, we have uh, the MBA and other uh, uh, stalwarts that defend our democracy. And, in, and, and you can see that there has been an, Im, Im, an Im, improvement overall in how, how this democracy has been defended. I mean, we have journalists who have been arraigned on spurious counts and charges in court, but we also have access uh, to legal counsel uh, provided for them by these NGOs and these civil society organizations. So, by and large, it's take a while for us to get that right balance between government owning TV stations and private stations being able to put out the news unfiltered. It will take a while for us to normalize hearing the truth, the uncensored truth, and being able to allow our citizens to pick and choose which news outlets they want to listen to. But again, if the government does not up its game, these channels or these beauty houses will soon become a thing of the past because nobody will be watching them. And of course, the government financing of these stations will soon dry up. And without any of these revenues or any of this financing, your guess is as good as mine, that these private media houses, are which are the, the most watched channels in the country as, as, as of this moment, will continue to hold sway. And um, the government will also rethink its own strategy going forward. Deja Wobide is a legal practitioner. Always a pleasure uh, having you and, of course, having these conversations. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's the show tonight. But before I go, I would like to give you my take. Unity is a nice sounding buzzword. Politicians like to employ when they ask for votes or of groups and sections of the population which they cannot possibly identify with. While it is a nice sentiment, it comes with you know, a caveat of insisting that such candidates are the only ones capable of carrying the flag of true unity. Now, Northern leaders have been a part and parcel of leadership since independence. The people of the North have always had voices representing their interests at every level of government. Within the immigration service, the military, the police, and even in civilian parts of the government, the Yoruba, Igbo, and members of other tribes serve within these institutions, but most often serve under the command of these Norse, and are sitting you know, at the highest levels, even in the southern parts of the country. So why then is it that with so much access to the levels of political power, the north of the country is the least developed part of the country? True unity may only ever be possible in Nigeria when we do away with the need for power sharing formulas and the make, uh, you know, to make individual choices to vote for one of or the most competent candidate. We need to try as much as possible to fill candidates who actually represent a true Nigeria. I'm Mary Anakom. Have a good evening. <laughs>